Say hi. Okay. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Moments with the Mobley. I am your man, Johnny Mobley Jr. And I am his wife, Deidre Mobley Jr. And we are something like an ordinary couple with extraordinary purpose. Greetings, salutations, accolades, and blessings. You gonna learn the day you're not gonna get them blessings. Don't know. I don't know. I wasn't a part of that last. It was. I feel like saying, I don't know what just happened. I don't know. It it's off. the presence of the Lord. She went off in the ditch. I don't know what happened. The presence of the Lord is here. All right. What's up, everybody? So today is March seventeenth. It is Saint. Three days Day. after our anniversary, 31 years, and today is St. Patty's Day in Savannah, Georgia. Well, it's everywhere. But. It's everywhere, <laughs> but Savannah, Georgia got like 90 billion people here. So do we, and I don't know if this is still a fact, but do we have the largest parade in the world? No, I think we like either rank number two or three. We're in the top three. Oh, okay. But like people from all over, like literally, yeah, like the New York firefighters came out one year. I don't know if they still come. Like a, like three bands from, I think, New York um, area, and some other bands from some other places. I don't know and, if it's still the same because remember when we was in the band, of course we was a part of it, but of course that's been many moons ago. But they, I saw on Facebook that the. McGregor, the MMA fighter, mm. or something like that, is in town. Yeah, for I the tell parade. You Some of everybody in town, and guess what we did? Stayed clear of downtown because it's it's too much for me. Yeah, it's too much. It's a lot. It's a lot going and on. Although our our anniversary was on a Tuesday, and we still had stuff going on. Um, of course, we thought about now. What we usually do is go out of town. If I anniversary on in lands on a you know thursday friday where we can make a weekend of it then we usually go out of town but you know we got stuff to do and you know we rocking and rolling so we gonna do something though but what we ain't gonna do is going to savannah this is what we ain't gonna do i can't yeah. even know remember the, the beat the beat of the here's song. what you're not gonna do yeah who was that jane that's not no daggone Jaheem. That's Andy and Minnie. <laughs> you know. Sorry, I was just asking. You know, I know you like Jaheem too, though. Yeah, but Jaheem don't sing that. Oh, sorry, wrong genre. Is that it? Wrong genre. Mm -hmm. That chick says that Jaheem. <laughs> do you not like Raheem? Jaheem? Yeah, I do like Jaheem. Right. That's why I'm not I'm not crazy. You, you know the last you, time Jaheem came out was on? You wrong for that. I'm just saying. He, that could have been another song. I know you like that song, so I I, I don't know why. I was mm. thinking of a different place. You probably I, you know what I was thinking of? Tone. Hey, what you're not going to do. And you probably yeah. were thinking about Why it. do you know how to sing that better than me? Because I like that Here's song. what you're not going to do. Yeah. You can actually sing. I don't know why you be acting like you can. I could do a little something with certain things as long uh -huh. as I stay in my range. Mm -hmm. When I try to sound like other people sing, right. then I can't do it. Because then right. I try to go and then, you know, I, I only have a certain area where it stays. Uh -huh. And like some people can like, like you can go up like an octave. You used mm -hmm. to go up a couple of octaves, and mm -hmm. I think you probably can go up like one and a half. No, don't do it. Don't but do then, it. Don't do it. But then when my now, voice is rested, you, I can go up several a few right. oct octaves. And then now you got that that deep, <laughs> that deep. Here's but you what like you're that not deep. Gonna do. You like that deep though? Because she sang on the worship team, and I always <laughs> tell her. She sang soprano. She be on the, you know, facing the pulpit. She be on. This ain't got nothing to do with what we talking. About. This it has everything to do with. It. She be on the right side. She be the lead one on the right side. And you know, because of what I how I serve in the church, I be all over the place. So, you know, come out 
bring the apostle out. We, you know, getting him set up. We getting ready. And she was on this side. I was like, why are you on this side? Then, you know, they be singing a little song. And I hear a little, man, 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 Jesus, Jesus, man, and I be like, ain't no dudes. I'm like, she singing, she singing the deep register with us. And then I had text her when she goes, hey, you, you were singing the bit? Yeah, I was singing the deep part. You just talented. You can sing all the, you can sing anything. <laughs> Tell them what you really said. The Lord, this bitch, I said, that's sexy if you can go. <laughs> you can sing falsetto and baritone. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> You're crazy. That's like that's like the beginning and the end, and then you got all the other parts in the middle. That's I just learn something new about you every day. Now he's supposed to be focused on serving the man of God, and you over there talking about you. That was that was sexy, baby. I text her again. I was like, mm, that was real nice, Mo. You <laughs> might get an offering for that when you get home. You're crazy. Cause I did not. I just didn't know. I know you was. I know you got skills, but mm, it just did something different to me. Just did something different to me. But in the spiritual and the natural. Oh yeah. You all right? Mm hmm. Happy thirty one years. Happy thirty one, girl. So what is we talking about today? Cause you the know, fact that you still love me. The fact that. You still like me and you still love me. You still want me. And you gonna always need me in your life. And the fact that, you know, when we were younger, I think you said you and James just to talk about getting older and sitting on the porch with your grandkids and your grandkids and stuff like with that. With the rocking chairs. Yeah. And the fact that. You know, we now have nine grandbabies, and here we are married for 31, and I think this August it'll be 37 years, I believe, mm -hmm. since we met. And so I told somebody the other day, I said, the fact of the matter is that after all these years, um, you're still good to me. That's the church song. That's Todd, Todd Gilbert. But after all these years, when you walk in a room, I still get giddy and still get the feelings that I did when I first walked in the church and saw you in the choir stand. I don't think they're the same. What do you mean? Because back then you used to lust me. Well, I lust you now as well. Do you? Yeah. You do. I do. You do. And you lusted me yesterday, real bad. And you shocked me the way you looked at me. But it felt good. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you could have got an offering immediately, you know? You had that little brown thing on, and I wasn't ready. I forgot what we was doing yesterday. You were sitting on the couch. Yeah. And, and I, I came downstairs and went in the kitchen to get something. And I came, walked up to you to explain something to you or to tell you something. And I ain't knew what you had on. And you walked around that corner. I was like, hey, you going to rehearsal like that? <laughs> I thought of thinking, it's what men, what men at rehearsal? <laughs> Jameson, Charlie, John. Literally, he was going through his head. I was like, hmm. I said, Jay good, Charlie good, John, he about 13% suspect because I don't think he'll do nothing. He'll look and think some stuff, though. Jerry, it's something. It is really something wrong with you. That's how I was thinking. We right here calling folk name. You calling folk name. That ain't right. We was just playing, though. We was. But I was thinking. I was like, you can't, you can't wear that. But, you know, you shock people. People see you as mother, and then you come in there as the the other mother. They <laughs> <laughs> be looking like you know, motherhead. I ain't no mother. <laughs> mother, there's something wrong with you. You know that you know, motherhead. I ain't no motherhead. All that right now, my mother. 
Oh, I'm still a woman. Yeah, you still a Give woman. Give me your mother. I'm still a woman, though, I'm and still I'm still woman. fine. You are still fine. And this. I'm fine for you. So, baby, mm. in these 31 years, what is the... If somebody asked you what advice... Newly married couple, what advice would you give for for what is the greatest lesson that you have learned after being married for so long? What's the greatest lesson that you've learned? The greatest lesson. The greatest lesson. I know it's a it's a it's you probably can name a lot, but what's the greatest lesson that you've learned as far as how to maneuver this thing called or live this thing out called marriage was the greatest lesson so i would say being married i'm um, getting advice from different people about marriage um and then trying to have a narrative in your head about what other people said putting the pieces together and then trying to put that in your marriage um and then you get frustrated when it does not work because what other people tell you most of the time is their experiences, um, what they was exposed to. And until they get to a good place to like give wise decisions and able to put it on a platform to where it's neutral, that you can, they can pick it up and use it and make it theirs, that it can be very, very frustrated, frustrating being in a marriage, hearing a lot of different stories about how people think and how people do stuff. And then when you get in it, it's nothing like what other people say. Mm -hmm. um, but then I would, I would say the, the most meaningful and powerful part of it is just staying. So the pressure the pressure of it produces something good, something great. And most people don't stay in the relationship or in the marriage long enough to allow it to produce, oppress the, the pure all or the pure product from the marriage. So what usually happens is they get to a place in their mind where they feel like it's a point of no return. It's just never going to work. We just never going to see eye to eye. Um, and then they pull out. So the one thing that I can say is I'm not saying that I didn't want to pull out. And I'm not saying that it was a couple of times I didn't try to pull out, but, but because I stayed, the pressure produced something out of me that I never knew I had. So from where I saw myself in the beginning of the marriage as being your husband and them girls daddy and still trying to figure out who I was and kind of understanding what my purpose is, but understanding the order and the actual ingredients to be who I'm called to be, um, having understanding your identity first and then using your purpose, then knowing what your purpose is and being able to move in it and then hear the voice of God and understand and know because you got a relationship with him that this is where you're supposed to be at. You're confident in it and you move and then becoming, moving from just being a provider and somebody who paid the bills and the protector, I moved from that to being a nurturer to being a leader, to being someone who wise can impart in my family and my wife and my kids, I learned a whole lot. And that all came out of the pressing of me staying. And the biggest thing, that I guess the most important thing I can say for young couples just starting out, stay. S stay in it. It's going to be tough. It's going to look crazy. It's going to feel crazy. Um, but that is the meshing from the pressure and that is the meshing of you and your wife becoming one. Nothing becomes one overnight. Nothing. It's always a catalyst that has to, has to create the link for something to stick together and move as one. 
So, and the catalyst for a husband and a wife doing that is to continue to stay together, work through your challenges, work through your flaws, get to a place to where y'all moving in some areas the same, and then continue to work on the other areas until you get all the areas moving in the same rhythm. And then that's when you see greatness come out of your marriage. It's not overnight. It's just not overnight. That the beginning parts of what you feel is the the lust part. And if anybody who's been married long enough know that the lust part, they it come and then it go. So you definitely have to love your wife or your husband from a deep, deep place of cherish physically, spiritually, mentally, the whole nine. And that only comes from the all that comes from the present of staying in it. That was a long answer. It was, but this has been moments with the boys. <laughs> We are so happy you came. www.momentswiththemobilies for all things Mobleys. We are Mobleys. Uh, Moments with the Mobleys on all social media except for Twitter. Twitter, we are Mobley Moments. Happy anniversary to us. Um, we still celebrating, and I'm we done. I'm going to give you. A, come on, let's let me go give you an offering because that was really nice, Mo. Yeah. Normally you get to talking, and then you go to South Africa. You start in Rankin and then you go to South Africa and, and you go to Venezuela, and I New Zealand, and yeah, all over. Yeah. And then you come back to Rankin. I, I used to I usually have to be, baby, come back to Rankin. But you stayed in Rankin, baby. Yeah. And, and you and gave, gave, gave a great summation of, of I that just I just know answer for the question. The hardest thing about being the hardest thing it was about being married was us learning how to move together, mm -hmm. not work together, how to move together. Mm -hmm. You can work together, but it'll only be in the places that requires work. And then the other places you take for granted, just thinking because the sex is good or whatever else is good, that it's going to be like that forever. Mm -hmm. You literally got to work in every area. So when we understood and comprehended that we had to move together as one, Mm -hmm. then that required us to pay attention to every area of our life. So now that we are there and we practice, and it took a lot of practice, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, some of the areas evolve, and then we, we're we able to adjust a little better now. Mm -hmm. But we didn't, you know, at the beginning, we didn't know it was adjustment that had to happen. When we thought once we got the movement part ready, good in every area, that, you know, we was good. But then you got stuff that evolved because we're not the same people we were when we first met. Mm -hmm. So throughout the, the years in our journey, we start to change from the way we think, the way we move, the way we talk, the way we dress, the way we look, the way everything. Mm -hmm. So once it starts to evolve, whether it, you know, inclines or declines, we have to adjust. Right. So, but you have to you have to mesh together as one and move together for that to happen. The working together, that comes automatically. That's the benefit of moving together. But if you not moving together and you just working on together on certain things, then the, the focus is on the thing and not the people. So the moving together is focused on the people. Mm -hmm. So me and my wife, me and Deidre moves together very well in a lot of different areas. And the adjustment part, we have gotten down. So that does not mean we still don't have a lot of stuff to learn because in 2023, a lot of stuff has changed. Yeah. So we still got stuff to work towards. But at the end of the day, like we always tell couples, because we are who we are and we work hard on our marriage does not exempt us from nothing that no other couple goes through. The only difference is you put the same thing in front of five different couples who got five different perspectives, then their narrative in their head, they're going to see it different. Mm -hmm. And if the couple is not moving together, then it's a possibility not only will 
the different couples see it different, but then the different individuals in the couples will see it different, mm -hmm. which will cause a whole nother roadblock. So it don't exempt us. We still deal with stuff. We just, we got a strategy and a system that we put that thing in and we work it. And it don't work perfect all the time. Sometimes we got to adjust it. Sometimes Deidre got to say stuff to me to get me back on track and vice versa. But it is what it is. But we're very open to getting guidance from each other when it comes to stuff. Because we protect our relationship. We protect each other's hearts. And we protect each other, period. Yeah. So... That's all I got. You the, got some more questions? The one thing that Yeah, Tim, you answered the same question. Well, I'm going to I'm going to piggyback. I'm oh, I'm going to say something based on what you said and then I'll say mine. The one thing that you were saying as far as staying and putting forth the effort and the pressing that comes you know in the marriage and what you, you know, what you decide to put in it or invest in it, um, you'll see a great return. If you, you know what I'm saying? If you put in the effort to stay and to stick with it and get the help when needed and, you know, reach out for the help, um, for good help and, and, and take heed to it and put the different tools to work. Um, because like you said, you could put the same problem in front of five different couples and you're going to get different perspective based on on their experience and based on, um, you know, based on their past and based on, you know, where they are now as a couple. Yeah. You're going to get different stuff. But the thing about that is I was thinking um, about what you said as far as. Just just doing doing the work because the work the work has to happen when the pressing comes. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I, I thought about how the when I had a conversation, well, it was actually a text with um, with a young lady and. She did want to participate in getting help, the help for her and her spouse, but. Only up until she had, she had, I think, reservations when she came in because she basically came into it, I think, thinking that he was the one who needed the help versus them needing the help, if that makes sense. He needs it. I'm good. I'm in the marriage. He just needs to get better. And the one thing that we shared with them was like, you no, know, both of y'all got stuff that y'all got to work on from past things, issues, um, you know, and stuff that y'all are dealing with now that has manifested because of some of the, a lot of the past issues and some of the rooted stuff that y'all haven't dealt with. And I was reading to you because it take me, it took me a few days to finally respond to what was sent to me. And so, you know, she decided to stop the the counseling. But the one thing that I, it took me a few days to respond to it because I really had to like t talk to the Lord about what to say yeah. to make sure that I gave the right response. And so for me, my response to her, because people for, for us, what we've seen in a lot of marriages is people, especially people who are newly married or been in it for a few years. And then they see us being married for 31 years or 30 years or 20 or whatever it was at that time. And sometimes you'll find people saying, Oh my gosh, I want to be like y'all. Oh my gosh, I want to, you know, be, you know, goals or I want to get to the point to where y'all at or I want that or, oh, y'all just so good together and all these things. But what y'all made, what y'all didn't see, well, yeah, a lot of it y'all know now because of the podcast or whatever, if you listen or watch or whatever, but what goes into what was what is in the middle from uh, 19 March 14th 1992 up until here we are 31 years later on Tuesday you know last Tuesday March 14th um and today so it's what happened and what transpired within that time within that process because that's what we've been going through and so but for me it's 
her saying, you know, yeah, I love him and all these things, but I'm in, and I love him, but I'm not going to deal with this and I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. And so what I had to remind her of is that your vow, because this is what I had to be reminded of as well, several different times in our marriage, what was the vow that you made? You know, whether it was in sickness and in health, um, for richer or for poor, you know, for better or for worse. And we've been tested in all those areas. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's about the, do you honor your vows? Because at the end of the day, they, I don't know what vows y'all use, but at the end of the day, it is for, for richer or for poor. We've been rich. We've been poor. We've been median. We've been negative poor. <laughs> is that even a word? I mean, like for real, for real. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it's we've been better and we've been worse. We've been in good times and we've been in, in bad times. And so I just had to remind her. I said it very carefully, but I wanted to remind her, you didn't get here. You These issues didn't come up overnight or these things that have marinated over the years they didn't just happen or y'all didn't just learn these habits overnight and they're not gonna go away overnight because that's what some people tend to think yeah and so that's a part of the staying to go through the issues not to sit in them and get frustrated or not to sit in them and because some people will sit in the situation and not seek help to get a different perspective or to get different tools to deal with it yeah. because obviously their way hasn't been working, but they'll sit in it and either be too prideful. We don't want nobody in our business. Um, no, we got it. Well, don't worry about it. Cause we can't agree. So we're going to just agree to disagree and nothing still gets solved. But at the end of the day, it's about reaching out to get those tools so you can move through that situation and that's how you build the 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 seconds and the minutes and the hours and the days and the weeks and the months and then years of marriage happen. Yeah. And so you that's that's how you get to 31 years. That's how you get to the 50 something years that Johnny parents are married. That's how you get to, you know, some other couples that, you know, we're friends with or whatever who have longevity, you know, any marriage who've been, who's been any marriage that's been for long periods of time that you say you goals or you envy or this or that baby it's work. And the sad part about it is it, it is. So a lot of people don't want to do the work. They want the outcome, but they don't want to put in the work that yeah. it takes. And I think yeah. that, that couple you talking about, I think they main issue, um, well, I would say one of their main issues are she she has an expect an unspoken expectation. Absolutely, and she's having, and it's a bit un sometimes has, unrealistic. And she's having a conversation with other people who are chiming in and giving her suggestions and their opinions on what they think. But the one person you should have been talking to to find out the work that's out, you never <laughs> talked to. Right. So when you get to that person, your husband, then you coming at them like you already had a conversation mm -hmm. and they don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. So the un, unspoken expectations is definitely a, um, a big stickler of ours because a lot of couples, and this is the thing, a lot of couples don't talk to each other and be transparent. They still um, want their spouse to see them a certain way for whatever reasons, from from past traumas of whatever it could be, from mm -hmm. the smallest to the biggest. But if you can't, if you can't be, so I had I had a, a session with a young man um, this week, and the one thing that he asked me was how how are you able to talk to your wife about anything. He said, and is she comfortable talking to you about anything? I said, well, it was not always like that. Mm -hmm. I was more willing to talk to my wife about stuff, but it always seemed like when I did, she got frustrated. She didn't really know what to say, and it made her cry. 
So I kind of try to measure what I can tell her based on what I could. But that wasn't a life to live because I needed needed Deidre to be able to take in what I was saying and then develop words to conversate back with. Mm -hmm. So we just had to work on it. And now, you know, she's good at it. But I said, but I had to make sure I gave her an environment that she can be herself, mm -hmm. unapologetic, in her skin, be who she is, say what she needed to say, regardless of what it sounded like, how it came out, whether it was a stab at me, whatever the case is. But I, I had to give her that until she got to that place to where she can sharpen up. So it's almost like you shooting to be a marksman and then, you know, you got the different stages of it. I said, so what we always did was whatever lane we was working on, we would work on it. Once we got to a good place, most people will leave that lane and then go to the next lane and work on that. I said, but what we usually, what we didn't, what we know now that we didn't know before that stuff evolves over years. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, you will have to revisit every lane that you done got together and things change. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do is once we found ourselves going back to different lanes, whether it was the finances, whether it was the sex, whether it was parenting, whether it was, you know, the actual relationship, the communicate, regardless of what it is. Once we went back a couple of times, we said, OK, so now that we are we've gotten good and even great. We got to become snipers at this now. Mm -hmm. We got to become experts. So what we got to do is put a system in place already that will that will be like a unicorn that you must say that if we put it in, we ain't got that much adjusting to do to get it right because now we understand that you know when we was twenty five we were one way when we got thirty we was another way we got thirty five we changed again got forty we changed again we got fifty we changed again and we probably go keep continue to change and then evolving as we get older. So regardless if it's, like I said, an incline or decline, but we have stuff in place to where when it comes, we don't know what it is, but we can put it in there and then we can adjust and we keep moving mm -hmm. versus you get in the lanes, you get everything from, from bad to good to great. And some people don't even get to great. They just get the good and then they content with that and then they move on to something else. And then they always have to come back. And that's where people get to where they like, man, I'm so tired of talking about this. We done talked about this. We had it straight now. Now we're talking about it again. Well, it changes. Mm -hmm. All of it changes. All of it. Parenting, having all the kids in the house. You don't have the kids in the house no more. They out, you know, and then... You know, on top of that, once they leave from high school or college and then they make some decisions, you literally inherit some of their issues and stuff unless you put something in place to help them to help them make better decisions. But, you know, it's a lot of couples that their kids move out and then their kids make decisions and don't discuss it with their parents. And then once they get in trouble, they come back to their parents for them to bail them out and their parents bail them out. And that becomes their norm. So the kid goes from high school, college, and now they're doing whatever. But every time they make a bad decision, they go back to the parents. And the parents done built that, built that, I don't know if you want to say a support, but it's like almost a. That cushion, that safety net. Yeah, uh, the, the handicap of if I do this, then I can always call on my parents and they always help me. We got systems set up. Our kids can always come back home. If our kids that are married, they need help, we got them. If the grandkids need help, we got them. But what we what we ask them when they come back? You got to have a plan. And when I say, I, you <laughs> just say you got to have a plan. My, if you have to have an exit plan, which means That's if you come here, I already need you to know how What's you're going to build it. How you're going to build it. 
how you going to get yourself back on your feet, and how you going to pull out. That that's I, I need to know that. And if it takes a minute for you to figure it out, then that's fine. It's no pressure, but there's responsibility there. Yeah. So I don't even remember what I was. Dad, the you point went I was to making. Argentina. Yeah. So yeah. I'm it's coming okay. back to ranking now, but at the end of the day. When I was talking to the guy, I told him, I said, my wife, you know, because of all the stuff that done happened, because of the infidelity, because of a lot of stuff, I put a lot of things in place that, you know, my wife was already not as comfortable with expressing a lot of stuff to me. And then when that happened, that just made her, you know, backslide back in because now the one person that I love, care for, that's, you know, give me security is the one person that hurt me like I wouldn't expect nobody else to hurt me. So now I had to rebuild all that up. And now she has a confidence in her skin that she can say anything to me. And I literally had to say it don't matter if it's a cussing, if it's a, you know, whatever it is, even if you have to call me out my name, but I need you to get it out and we'll work on the We'll work on the, the verbal part of it later. The delivery. <laughs> but I need you to get it out because what's happening is if people who don't communicate about things, once they start bubbling up, they create a narrative in their head. And then uh -huh. now they got a whole storyline in their head uh -huh. and they don't talk to their spouse. And what they wind up doing is talking to other people, telling them the story in their head. And then they people give you suggestions on the story you develop in your head. Uh-huh. And then they give you ideas and suggestions, and then you go back and talk to your spouse, and your spouse looking at you like, what in the world are you talking about? So my question to him when he asked me that, he said, because I want her to be able to do that. I said, well, you got to create an environment to where she feels like she can be absolutely yeah. transparent. Yeah, vulnerable. Booty naked. Yeah. Physically and mentally. Just be out there. But you got to give her that atmosphere. You got to give her that place that she can do that. What are we talking about? Hmm? Physical nakedness? All of it. Okay, great. Booty naked. Well, let's, let me jump on to what you were just saying about adjusting always things. Always trying to jump on. Always. Um, talk about adjusting things. Because the one thing that I did ask you um, um, the other day, I said, babe, we've been married for 31 years. Praise Jesus now. Let's go ahead and praise him right there. I'm going to give you a second. To Shata Daba. And bless the Lord right Girl, there. you don't talk. I am talking, but I have to give honor where honor is due. And this is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. Okay. And so, um, the one thing that I did ask you, I said, after 31 years of marriage, as your wife, how can I serve you better? And what was your response to me? I told you that you are doing a great job now. You, the main thing is, as we grow and evolve, I told her she adjusts and she shifts well. And that's the thing. You, because we change on a daily basis, you know, most people get frustrated when I just learned that you like this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Now you don't like this. Now you like this. And now you don't like this. You like this. And that's, that, what, that is what put people in a marriage in a place of, well, I ain't going to tell them that. And then they're going to complain about it. I, done, I liked it before and now I don't like it. And now mm -hmm. I'm being a bother. And... That's a that's a spouse that's not able to be themselves. Mm -hmm. But they go talk about that situation with somebody, mm -hmm. whether it's a girlfriend, whether it's a coworker, whether it's a male friend, regardless boyfriend, of boyfriend, boo thing. Yeah, so uh, it's mm -hmm. gonna it's gonna happen. So I need to be completely open to my wife so she can tell me anything, and regardless of what changes with me. Because I'm a lot to deal with. But regardless of what changes with me, Deidre, 
shifts and she adjusts very well. Because I, I am a visionary and I have visions on a lot of stuff and we work the pieces and then sometimes I go to Argentina and then she be like, okay, I got but you. But I follow you, baby. We in Argentina, but but we we got to we gotta head back to ranking. We just got to take care of some stuff in ranking. Let's build this mm -hmm. so this bridge completely connects. Because mm -hmm. right now, we just jumping. We don't know how long we can jump. So because we did that, let's build a bridge, connect the pieces. Absolutely. And that way, we can have a smoother transition. Everything be lucrative. And I need that. Everything will be what? Lucrative. <laughs> I feel, so, I feel lucrative when you so said that. <laughs> I need, I need that in my life. Cause when I when I make decisions, I can be here and I go clean cross over there and then I come back over here, then back this way. And then she followed me. But then every now and then she tapped me on my shoulder. And I trust her counsel. I trust her counsel. He trusts my tapping. Yeah. So okay. when she say, Hey, let me talk to you for a minute. I got all that. This is where we at. This is what we working with. This is how the measure is now. Mm. So the measure is this long right now. And right now your measure is like from here and I can't see the end of the other measure. So what we need to do is figure out a way. Let me help you. Tell me what you need. I need some more. But we need to figure out a way to connect this stuff so we can connect the measures and then we can move how we need to move. And my question, my my answer is always okay. Now, before it did, it wasn't it used to be like that. It didn't. I I used to be stubborn, very stubborn. And when she would say something, I would always say, "See, that's why we can't work." Cause I'm a different dude when I'm in this, and I'm you know until the day she told me, "I know who you are. I've been with you." Stop saying like I don't know who you. I know who you are. I said, "All right." You want this? Come on and get it. <laughs> I have it. So You want this? Come on and get mm -hmm, it. All of and it. And then because I told her to come on and get it, the book I was trying to finish that took me two, I three years, we finished in about 12 hours. But, babe, so the one thing that I want to say regarding that is that I asked, I asked you that, but you didn't ask me that back. I didn't ask you. How I can serve you better? Mm -hmm. You didn't ask it back to me. Okay, honey. Well, I'm asking you right now, in front of everybody. How can Johnny Mobley Jr. serve his queen better? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't, if you can't make her giggle, <laughs> just saying something is wrong. Oh, my lips are chapped. They dry. So listen. I believe that first of all, the, the first thing that I told you that drew me to you was the fact that the, or the one thing that has stuck in my mind from the beginning of this is you opening that door for me. And so thank you, Holy Sh Ghost. Shivery. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But what I didn't realize is because you stayed and because I stayed, not only do you open doors because it began, you opening doors for me in the physical. Mm -hmm. I felt where you, was you, going you get where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I know I'm gonna get me an offering tonight mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit just gave it to me. You that I've always told. Have, have I not always told you that? I've always opened doors for you in the physical. Yeah, I, and, and but store door right. Or what it is? But I'm saying as far as me always saying to you that that's the one thing that I that really really drew me to you. Yeah, it, because that's the other folk wasn't doing that right. Yeah. But as I'm sitting here saying it now, the Holy Spirit just gave it to me. 
you began, that was something that you began and that's something that you still do until this day. You open doors for me. And so not only have you opened doors, you began opening doors for me in the physical, but because we stayed, you stayed, I stayed, we were pressed and, you know, tossed to and fro. Um, and now we are in a season or now we are in the stage of our marriage. We, let's say this, we have evolved to a place um, because I, you have relation with Christ and I do. Um, and we also seek him together. He's allowed you to open doors for me, you know, spiritually as well. Yeah. Um, and lead me, lead our family. Um, and so for me, that's, that's it, 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 for me, it revolves around that, the, the opening of doors Yeah. because not everybody, um, and you, you, y'all have probably heard, you know, men, it, it, it marries, it matters that you marry right men and women. It matters that it matters that you marry right. Because had we, even though we weren't, you know, like all in deepest relationship with the Lord, yeah. when we met each other because of our choice to make him our cho first choice, um, we are at a point now to where, um, he, I know that because we did marry right mm. that and and the lord kept his hand on us that we are you are continually maneuvering and opening these doors for me because yeah. you're the head and it comes from the head down yeah. and be because i um submitted myself to following you as you follow Christ, I've reaped the benefits of the doors that have been opened. Absolutely. And so I thank you for um, doing, I think doing what you, what, what originally first you saw your daddy doing for your mama, because I, I believe that's where it came from. Yeah. But you have continuously tried to, while growing into who you are, you've continuously, once you knew better, you did better. Yeah. And so with the changing and the changes that I've gone through, and I'm just speaking from my perspective because I know you, you know, have your own thoughts as well and you've shared them. But just from, from, from me to you, thank you for staying, but, and not only staying, but putting forth the effort to be better. Yeah. Because when you put forth the effort, of course, the Lord led and guided and all those things. And you at some point surrendered and say, okay, God, I realize that, you know, my life's purpose is greater than what I'm seeing. And even though I don't know, I, I give myself to you. Yeah. Because that, that this, the leading this family, leading period is going to require my submission to you. And so you cared at that point after that, and you gave your life to Christ, like legit, legit. After that, it was your sole purpose to lead us and make sure that we are okay. Yeah. Make sure that I'm okay. Make sure that you are closely listening to what the Lord is saying so you don't lead us in the wrong direction. And that's important. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of men don't realize that that's important. And a lot of women, um, and I'm going back to the, the girl that I sent the message to, sometimes you don't know how important it is for you to just stay and pray. And I'm not talking about, you know, if he bashing your head in and all these things or whatever, because that's a whole nother conversation. But when trying times come, Sometimes it's, it's it's the time to stay and pray, not to stay and battle him or run, you know, run your mouth about you ain't this and you ain't that and tell him what he's not. But I thank God that I knew and I, I wasn't all, all, all the time like this. I, yeah. That was it was this wasn't always me. This wasn't always my posture. But there comes a time when I realized and the Lord showed me that, yeah, that might just be the 14 year old Johnny that you met, Deidre. But there's more to his life. There's greater in him. 
And if you're to help, if you're his helpmate and you say you his rib and you say all these things and you've been called to him, then you have a responsibility as his wife to speak life mm. and not death. No matter what Johnny would do, no, it can, sometimes it was some craziness because, of course, you were still trying to figure out who you were. But even in those moments when when I learned to listen to the voice of God and listen to what the Holy Spirit was saying to me, stay. Pray, okay. stay, but pray. Not run your mouth, not cuss him out, not, you know, he ain't going to do this and he ain't going to talk to me and he ain't going to. Because the conversations were had. Yeah. But they were had in a more mature way. It, it got to a place. Right. It got to a place. Like I said, this ain't us from, you know, 1992 to, you know, nine, or or should I say, two, nine, this ain't a couple of years into the marriage. We had to grow into where we are now. But what I'm saying is now, thank you for allowing, staying and staying and not knowing what to do, but staying, staying and messing up. And still not knowing what to do, but staying, staying and not understanding what I was going through, but staying, you know, um, still you answering the question. I'm answering the question. Yeah, I am. I would just check. But, but I, I, this is a part of me thanking you, Mm. um, and saying what I, what I I was supposed to be saying, because I went to Hawaii. Um, but I was supposed to be saying what, how you could serve me better, but I'm saying all this to say this. To get to, I'm saying all that to get to this. You strive to serve me better every day. I do. Yeah. And I don't, I don't hit the target every day, and I can feel it when I don't. Um. And sometimes I may ask for guidance, and other times I just pray. Yeah. But. I I I have to I have to that's a part of my daily task. It's a part of my daily task. Cause it's easy to it's easy for that stuff to just fall through the cracks. And this is the thing, once you start having kids and all this other stuff. That stuff falls through the cracks every now and then, and then it falls through the cracks, and you wake up, and it's 15 years later. And you scratching your head wondering how in the world did we get here? Because mm-hmm. now you come to a place to where he's my, he's my husband, but he's a stranger, or vice versa. So, and that, that was something that was was created and developed by you because you always you always said you did not want us to not know each other once the girl left. Mm-hmm. So you really put forth the effort to create certain times and certain things that we would do. And, you know, I didn't want to do it all the time, but I did do it because that's what you wanted. And it helped. It helped. So, yeah, I, I, I stride... Every single day, through my prayers, through everything, just asking God, you know, to not only develop, not only to introduce me more as I mature into the Johnny that he created me to be, but how can I still be the great leader, the person that connects my wife to boomerang her into her her purpose? where I might have to dig ground and clear land, but then once it gets to a certain place, all I got to do is shoot you straight to the, the top or the girl straight to the top or my grandkids straight to the top or other people that are connected to me straight to the top. It's a responsibility that I learned throughout the years that I have, and I take my responsibility s- serious. So not only in the physical, but in the spiritual too. I am a key. I am a gateway to a lot of people that's connected. And I get that. I'm not trying to say that I'm all this and all that. But 
the way God created certain things. You are, though. You have to understand who you are, understand your power that he's given you, but still be humble because it's the power that God gave you. It's not the power that you just have. So it's not like you can just use the power anytime you want it if it's not used for what it's supposed to be used for. So the only way it can be productive and it can impact and change lives, which means anything that I do in power, once I leave you know Johnny Mobley Jr. was there. In some way, shape, form, or fashion, you knew I was there. Your life was changed. You saw something different, whether it was the 100,000 things I said or whether it was the 0.5 things that you heard that changed. It does not matter, but something changed. Mm -hmm. And that's where my responsibility is at. That's where it's at. So, but my number, my number... My number one thing is to continue to cultivate my relationship with God. And my number two thing is to continue to become a better man, not only for myself and for the people that are connected to me, but most of all for you. Because I'm continuing to evolve, I'm continuing to mature, and I want to become better and better and better and better through everything. So, yeah, I work on it every single day. And that's why I went off on the tantrum again. Mm. You all right? I love you. You done been crying. You done mess up your little thing. We go. We go. Go. Oh, no tantrum. So, we encourage everybody um, celebrate your your anniversaries. <laughs> celebrate the years of being married, whether it's one year five years, 10 years, regardless of what it is, every year that you make it, every year that you stay in it, every year that you stay in the fire, it will be refined and you will come out and you will see something that you never thought can happen. So continue to work on that. It's a continuous work. Once you stop thinking, it, thinking of it as, let me change that. When you start thinking of it as being a job and you think change your mindset of knowing that it is a lifestyle, then it will change a lot of things and make a lot of things easier for how you move. You can work on whatever you want to work on, but if you're not moving, you and your wife not moving the same, it ain't going to work. It just not. And the move is even when you're not working on the same things. If we're working on something individual, the move is the same. I am Johnny and Deidre is Johnny. And I am Deidre and Johnny is Deidre. <laughs> we are one. Yeah. The apple and, and the tree are one. That's all day. Yeah. And from our kids to our parents to our friends, everybody, they'll tell you the same thing. That's how we move. So... So I appreciate you, Mo. We're going to shoot for another year, another 10 years. We're going to keep it pushing. 20 years, 30 years, mm -hmm. 40 years. Because this is right here is until death to us part. Oh, here we go. You heard my New York accent? Until death to us part. Uh, yeah, I hear you. You can say what? I heard you. You agree, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Well, you sound like you're being forced. You're being tied up after you leave mm -mm. from out of here or something. You're looking mm -mm. a little suspect. No, it's all right. You all right? I'm all right. So we planning some stuff to do, y'all. We got a lot of, as as the older people used to say, we got a lot of, uh, is, was it sticks in the fire? Irons in the Irons fire. Irons in the fire. I'm talking about sticks. The sticks going to burn up. Irons. I told with this elephant. I, with these the, elephants the in the, with the clothes on. <laughs> um, a lot of irons in the fire. So. Oh. I just we, need um, you. So we just we figuring some things out, but we are going to celebrate. And of course, y'all don't know where we decided to go and what we decided to do. Um, on the night of, um, a lot of the, the day kind of went a little, you know, left and right and up and down. Um, but as y'all saw on the reels, I was able to cook dinner for him. And um, at this point, lamb chops got me in a chokehold, but. I did some, I seared some lamb chops in this 
some type of honey butter I found. Child, um, she and, always finding some new and, <laughs> and some and did some uh, some shrimp, sauteed some shrimp as well. And we had the twice baked potatoes, um, a toss salad, and we had crumble cookies. I need to post that. We had crumble cookies for dessert. Yeah, he she, had, I had chocolate chip and he had key lime. And she she our good friend Imari, a half a cookie. Genesis from Amari Eats. We get. You know, we're ambassadors for her seasoning and Lord Child. I was going to say thank you for talking to me. <sighs> I, so Amari has all kind of different seasonings. You know, salt free, that's what we use. We are, we are. She has salted as so well, but we opted for the salt free option. Amazing. But your boy, I can't, I can't do hot stuff. And she be trying to use the little, I put a tangent. I didn't do it this time. I did it the time before. I put a tangent of Cajun on it. But Mm-mm. I put a little bit of sweet heat on it. What? <laughs> now you sleeping like a baby, and I'm up here <laughs> hugging his porcelain, rub, rub, rubbing his belly. Yeah, but um, I'm like it go in my stomach hot, and it just stay in my coming stomach in hot, hot and coming out hot, and it bubble up. But he's talking about Imari Eats. I M A R I E A T S. Imari Eats dot com. Y'all check um, out. Check out her seasonings, y'all. We actually just she has some new sizes, so look for that reel. We'll do that open and do that reveal tomorrow. But um, she has some new sizes. There are some hot uh, the hot sellers. I think it's like the sweet heat is a hot seller. The um, uh, what's the kind we put on our eggs? Um, high stakes. High stakes is a hot one. Um, I'm gonna make. She has like a. Cur- she has a lot of them. But the that curry one, I think I want to try that on something. Maybe some mm-hmm. curry chicken or something like that. Yeah, you make curry chicken, uh-huh. and then you just. That's make not me- hot though. Curry chicken is not hot uh-uh. though. I don't. You believe. make the curry chicken, and uh-huh. then you make me a different kind of chicken. I can't deal with this man of mine. But yeah, imarieats.com. I m a r i e a t s dot com. Um, and Mob Star is our code for ten percent off. So make sure y'all go and look that up. We about to go, y'all. Um, we're gonna do something, um, something this weekend to celebrate as well. Um, we are gonna stay away from downtown because, as Johnny said, it's in Pat's weekend, and we don't want no parts of the hustle and bustle. Billion people out there, right? And the rooms are nine million dollars a night as well. And so eighty billion, billion of them. We got a whole house. We can go jump from room to room if we want to do that. But be in a different room. But check check Amari eats out. We yeah. will have the, have her and her husband on the show. Yes. very soon. Um, and like my wife said, we get working on a lot of stuff, and I know y'all been hearing that for like God knows how long. But I promise you, we're not going to put no trash out to you. So we definitely go get it together and we go work with our team and we'll get it out. So look for it. That has, that's, that's, that's it, Mo. That's it. All right. Well, thank y'all for joining us. I am your man. This has been Moments with the Mobleys. I am your man, Johnny Mobley Jr. I'm his wife, Deidre Mobley. And we still something like an ordinary couple. With a 31 years of extraordinary purpose. Well, actually more than that. But 37, six and a half. A lot. And we still together. Peace out, y'all. You and me, we never part. See? Mati Dada. See, I ain't got no problem with her saying that, but it always, always trickles down to salt water or something. Always. <laughs> Well, you told me you would put me under the pool in the backyard. Yeah, I, yeah, you did say that. That was the last thing you said. The yeah, last threat. They won't find you under there. What? This has been your man, Johnny Mobley Jr. Thank you for joining us in Moments with the Mobleys. I am your man, Johnny Mobley Jr. I'm his wife, Deidre Mobley Jr. And yeah, we still something like an ordinary couple. With extraordinary purpose. Peace out. Happy 31 year to us. Night, night. I'm not doing nothing to her because I don't come and you don't see her on here. Be asking me no questions. Y'all, do y'all know what Johnny told me this morning? In the wee hours, it wasn't the wee. It was about five something. It was before six o'clock. I know. And I went to the bathroom. He was getting ready for work. He had an earlier day today. He went to work and he was getting ready for work. And I came in the bathroom, used the bathroom, washed my hands, and then I was taking my contacts out because I was supposed to let my eyes breathe. Was taking the contacts out. He comes back in the bathroom and he said, what you doing? Texting your man. What? What man? 
I'm trying to get these contacts out my eyes, sir. Look. I said, how? How am I texting him? He said, on your burner phone. What burner phone? You pay the bill <laughs> on this one phone Listen. that I have every month, Listen. sir. Listen, it's a lot of... It's a lot of moves you be making that I just trust. I know. was in the mirror but taking contacts out of my eyes. In the morning, early like that, uh -huh. you get up and you your eyes closed. The light be too and much. And you walk in the bathroom. I know how to do it. Then walk to the bathroom door. Yep. In the commode, sit down. Eyes still closed. Mm -hmm. I know how to get do up, it. Get up, flush the commode, get, wash your hands. I still close. I know how to walk do it. Walk out, get back in the bed. And do, this morning, around the time she get up, I look in the bathroom. She bent over the dag on her counter doing this. Over the sink. Yeah. So I'm looking like. Then I walk in, then she jumps up, and then she going to the trash can. I said, what you, what you doing? What you moving so fast for? What's happening? Did I throw the burner phone in the trash? I don't know. You might have put it in the drawer, and then the the... the the um the distraction was going to uh, some lips, some See, I ain't even looking to draw. Some I ain't looking to draw for my lips, cause you're crazy. But she moved straight. She, I walked in there. She said, <laughs> "I was putting the opposite. I way. was putting the contact, the thing so that I'm the like, contact you, came out of. I'm like, what you doing? Poured the fluid, the liquid out of it, and put it was putting. What in the you doing? Can. Huh? What you doing? I'm changing my contact at five o'clock in the morning. I was taking the ones that I had in out. Your eyes was closed. And How I wore my glasses do, I don't most of the day. I don't understand. Your eyes was closed. Was the contacts was bothering you with your eyes closed? Amazing grace. How See, sweet to sound. This is going to be a whole other podcast. I don't know why she's like this. Y'all, peace out. We out. Have a good night.